Those of you who've been watching the channel for a while now might remember this iPod rebuild from four years ago. The walkthrough videos have had over 170,000 views since then on YouTube, so it seems like something that you might want an update on. In that two-part video, the old spinning hard drive was upgraded to an SD card using an iFlash.xyz adapter board. The top case, wheel, screen, and battery were also replaced, and since then it has performed really well. Over the years, a combination of both leaving the iPod plugged in all the time and not using it for long stretches of time has taken a toll on that battery, and it no longer works. When it stopped working, I had a 1300 milliamp hour iPod battery on hand that I swapped in, but as expected, it was too thick to fit in this 30 gigabyte model. You'll need to start with the 60 gigabyte or larger model iPod with the deeper back if you want the longest possible battery life in one of these types of rebuilds. The first replacement battery from four years ago was an instant 900 milliamp hour model. This time we've got a maximal power 600 milliamp hour version. That difference in capacity shouldn't be a big deal since taking out the spinning hard drive means these iPods don't consume much power at all. That is assuming you don't keep the backlight on constantly since that is the next biggest power draw that you'll experience. The hardest part of swapping a battery on these is getting the iPod open for the first time if you've never done it before. There are specific guides on how best to do this for every model of iPod over at ifixit.com. You should look there to make sure you're doing it right for whatever type of iPod you might have. Most replacement batteries like the one I'm using come with the basic tools you'll need to get the job done. If you have a pair of precision tweezers to use as well, that can be helpful, but it's certainly not required. So you can see just how easy that was. And if you've been putting off replacing a battery in your iPod because you thought it was too difficult, I really think you could probably manage it. A lot of folks have since shared their success stories in the comments of those two videos, but there were also a lot of questions. So let's take a look at a few of those now. Jonathan Chan asks, hey, I was wondering if your replacement faceplate had any tolerance issues when installing. I've tried so many and they all have issues with tolerance, either leaving too much of a gap between the plate and the wheel or jamming the buttons after installation. And my response to that is I must have gotten very lucky because I ordered this one faceplate and it has not had any of those issues. So I appreciate Jonathan letting us know that he's had some issues. That's good to know that you might need to expect that and order a couple of them. They're very cheap, but uh, thankfully I got very lucky and have had no issues with fit on the one I bought. It doesn't feel quite as robust and as solid or high quality as the original one from Apple, of course, but it does function just fine. Albert Bell asks, my fifth generation on off switch is not working. Can these be repaired, exchanged with a new one? And the answer is absolutely. I'll link below the iFixit page and they sell the parts. It's a headphone jack and hold switch replacement is what you're looking for there. And they say it's a moderately difficult repair. It takes 20 to 40 minutes depending on your experience and they sell uh, everything you'll need. And this video is not affiliated with iFixit at all in any way but uh, that is the best place to find the resources and the walkthrough guide on how to do that. So good luck and uh, hope you get that working again. One of the most popular questions came in from a lot of people, but this one here from Giannis, why not install Rockbox? And honestly, the answer to that is I like the original Apple UI. I remember it fondly and I have no need or interest in sideloading uh, other operating systems onto this iPod. 
it's certainly an interesting project and it's a great tool if you do need the functionality that it provides beyond uh, the original iPod. But for casual use, I think Apple really knocked it out of the park on this back in the day. D. Rex asked, I want this, but can you make it Bluetooth? And the answer is you probably could, but without having any way to know what the Bluetooth is doing because it wouldn't be integrated into the UI on screen, it really would be a tricky project. And you can go on Amazon, I'll link them below, and you can find 30 pin Bluetooth adapters uh, as cheap as $20, I think, to make your old iPod Bluetooth. So check the link below if that's something you really want, but not something I'm going to do with this one. Ajuk1 asks, why not use a Wi-Fi SD card, but doesn't say what he would want to use that for. And just looking online, there's some folks that want to be able to like upload MP3s from their phone and then other folks talking about using it to access the internet. So without knowing what your plan would be, all I can tell you is that I have no use for that. I've got no problem plugging this into a computer to put files onto it whenever I need, and I'm not sure how a Wi-Fi SD card would actually integrate with the operating system. So again, we'd be back to a Rockbox situation. Um, but if you could expand on that at all, anybody that might have ideas on what they would do with a Wi-Fi SD card in an iFlash adapter in an iPod like this, uh, let me know. I'd be interested to hear what you would think that would be good for. And finally, by far the most popular question is like this one here from Burroughs Lamar, and that's questions along the lines of, can I send mine in for you to do this? What would you charge to upgrade mine? And I've always had to answer those questions with no thank you. I do not receive that. Just really not something I want to get involved with with other people. The idea of these videos is to encourage you to try to learn a skill and uh, affect some interesting but easy repairs or modifications, not for me to set up a business doing this kind of stuff for other folks. There are probably people out there online, I'm not sure currently if there's somebody on Etsy or somewhere else uh, doing this kind of work, and uh, I'm sure it'd be a nice little business for somebody if they were willing to deal with the logistics and the headaches of people's data on these old drives and transferring iTunes libraries and all this other stuff that I just could not possibly want to be involved in any less. So after four years, I can pretty confidently say that I am happy that I spent the time and the money fixing this iPod up. It's genuinely fun to still use it. It's almost a novelty in 2022, it feels, to have a device that's dedicated to doing just one task and doing it really well. And I think for playing music, for some people, that's a device you'd be willing to carry. I remember the days of carrying Walkman and Discman before the iPod was ever a thing. And uh, it kind of brings a little bit of that back. Uh, I can tell you the amount of full albums I listen to using this iPod is remarkably higher than what I listen to on any of my smart devices because there's just endless possibilities to search and shuffle and uh, find different things on those devices. And it really is special to put on a set of good headphones or plug into some good speakers and listen to an album all the way through on a device like this. Kind of feels the same as picking up an instrument and having it kind of dictate what you want to play. It's that same kind of feeling. Uh, it changes how I listen to music anyway, and I think that's worth it. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.